As always, Adaptive has provided food, uh, which is always great, so I want to thank them and give you a chance to do your little spill. Thanks. Um, yeah, so my name is Matt Hink. I'm with Adaptive Solutions Group. I've been recruiting for Adaptive the last um, eight years. So, um, yeah, we appreciate the opportunity. And um, make sure you guys are spreading the word, you know, the more people we can get in here. If you guys have ideas on, on how to, um, you know, get people here. Did you get him? I brought them. Good job. So have an extra sandwich. <laughs> oh, you too. There you go. You get a third. Um, so, anyways, but uh, yeah, we're um, we have an office here in St. Louis. So, uh, as you guys probably know, the market's good. So, if you're ever interested or, or curious, um, feel free to reach out. We can have a conversation or um, need help hiring at your company or anything like that. So. Um, Things have definitely changed since COVID, so um, yeah, we, we appreciate and good to see everybody. And then also want to thank Moonshot, who provides the space, and then they gave me this cooler bag to give away. Ooh, ah. So we'll see. Uh, if someone asked a really good question or something, I'll uh, toss it to you. So the imagery. Uh, and of course, my computer goes to sleep, right? So today we're going to talk about uh, GraphQL, TypeScript, and Cogen, and uh, how you can get type-safe GraphQL access. I don't know why it is changing, but it just plays around. make it mirror my screen. I changed nothing. It just started doing it. Yeah, it knew what I wanted. Okay, so how many of you have used GraphQL? How many are at least familiar with it? Okay. Uh, TypeScript is everyone everyone using TypeScript or at least familiar with it? Familiar with it. Okay. Yeah, it just. Started working. Um, I didn't change anything, and then it popped back up there. It's working. Sorry for the delay, everyone. <laughs> uh, okay. Has anybody done code gen with GraphQL or other API type of stuff for that's type for type two? Trying it like this week, and that's why I'm here. Except questions. <laughs> oh, perfect. Well, you might be the one to get the bag. Or you tell. Uh, okay. So you you've been specifically. Uh, Working with GraphQL CodeGen, like this tool specifically? Not CodeGen specifically, but I'm working on a uh, headless CMS platform that's okay. got GraphQL access for pulling the content out. Okay. And uh, putting the TypeScript environment, we're trying to figure out how to make it point edge. Cool. Okay, so I will, I'm just, this is basically going to be live coding. I'm going to walk through kind of setting up a project and uh, adding in uh, the typings and kind of showing. Some of the pain a little bit. Um, so I'm going to create a next app using TypeScript and NPM and call it demo. Which 
probably. Yeah. Um, kind of hard to read the um, Okay. Should we turn these lights off? All the lights are off. But <laughs> I'd leave them all off, yeah. Okay. Now, just created a next, a next app. So, if I open that up. And we're frozen. This is a, a good start. So we have basic next app, and we can launch, we can run it. Basically, get the next app with nothing in it. So we can go and add. Apollo server. So has anyone worked in Next or no Next? Okay, so it, it has built-in API uh, support under pages. So we can go in and add a GraphQL API endpoint and delete this. Old endpoint or copy of my project over here. That's cheating. I know, right? <laughs> I mean, I can type it all out and uh, yeah, right. you can see all the uh, pain of that. So we're gonna handle these uh, API GraphQL and we're gonna pass it into Apollo server. So we'll have to go and install that.
So now, if I did everything right, we should have a basic GraphQL server running. An API GraphQL. All right, thank you for coming. Yeah. Uh, so for those that aren't very familiar with GraphQL, basically it's a uh, query language uh, where it's kind of in between uh, it's not really uh, an API layer itself, it's just a query language that lets you define what fields you want, what mutations you want to run, and uh, is very structured. We write these queries out like this and you can change them very easily. Get, get data, or now I need email address, you can just add that to your query and it will query email address and on the back end of the API it can parse out this, this query language and run the resolvers for each field, for each each type that you you want and provide the data and not query anything unnecessarily uh, and then you can because all that schema is defined in GraphQL you get this you can get these nice tools like this that lets you explore uh, you can look at your schema see if there's a member the root level query has a list of members and you can explore your API uh, in development like really easily it's a great great tool um, so I, I highly recommend GraphQL for, for API work for most situations. Uh, so here we have this, this working uh, API. So now I can add a client. And we can install Apollo client. So we create our client, we point the client at our GraphQL endpoint, set up a cache, and a top level context, uh, which is provided by the Apollo packages that we pass the client through, which gives access to that client instance to any uh, any place in, in that tree uh, that wants to run queries. And then we can go to our index page, which when it's generated just looks like this little static page. And we can define a query, just do it up here. Uh, all members query. Okay, so now we can type out a query that we want to run. In our component, we can use the use query hook.
down inside our component, we can use that data. Say if it's loading, we'll just say loading. Otherwise, data dot members dot map <coughs> and put in the member name. to our demo. And now all we have is the two names. If we go add more data to this, <coughs> now we have three names. So we're, we're hitting a real live query running in our API layer from the, from the front end. But at this point, uh, this is you know, no, no code gen, no TypeScript really involved with, uh, with the GraphQL end. So if we go look at these properties, the, the data prop is an int. The loading prop is a boolean because that, that does come from the TypeScript typings of, of uh, Apollo. But the data, it doesn't know. It's just passing in some random document is this and it's going to return the results from the server but it has no clue the structure the shape of that so it can't provide you any typings so down here as you expect with no typings data is any you get nothing no help no verification of, of uh, any types so now comes code gen if we run GraphQL code gen. Install the CLI of the GraphQL code gen package. And then we'll run it. The init, it gives us some options. So we can say we're working with Angular, React, Stencil, and uh, vanilla JS, and it will pick the right uh, appropriate plugins and it's, it's not specific to React. Uh, it has support for integrating with, with uh, different clients, uh, React Query and Apollo and several other uh, clients. So there's all kinds of plugins you can configure and you'll see that in a minute. We'll tell it where our schema is. So it's at localhost 3000. Uh, tell it where our GraphQL documents are in this case, it's under pages, is where we'll put them. And then you can select what things you want to run, or what things you want it to generate. Uh, so we'll take these TypeScript ones, we're gonna use Apollo, it's already selected that. Um, there's a few others you can select, uh, but we'll get into it a little more in a minute. We'll select default output. We'll go and generate introspection file default code gen, YAML, and I always call the script in the packages file generate. Uh, so when you want to refresh your typings, you just run npm run generate, but you can call that whatever you want. And I installed everything. And this is what it generated right here. So just built this file in that little wizard that we went through, put in the values uh, where it's going to look for the schema, where it's going to look for your GraphQL documents and what plugins and files you want to generate. And 
if I run this now, it's going to complain because we don't have we don't have any GraphQL documents for it to find. So it's complaining about that. So we'll come up here, we'll take this query, and we'll move it out to a file on its own. And just paste it there. You can uh, point it to TypeScript files or JavaScript files or other locations to find all your GraphQL documents. I just like to keep them in a GraphQL um, file on their own and you can set these up to look at your uh, API and you can get IntelliSense or Autocomplete or whatever you want to call it uh, on your GraphQL documents as you're typing them out. Uh, so you get some nice little benefits there. You, you probably get those in TypeScript that in TypeScript files too, but I just think it's clean to keep them out like that. Uh, and then we'll rerun generate. Yep. Run. What does the introspection uh, file do? Uh, I'll show it to you in just a second. Uh, in, so introspection is when you run a query against your GraphQL endpoint to get all the types back. Um, and all that introspection file is is an export of that query result so that you can run tooling against it. Um, you can check it into source control. Uh, there's, there's times when you need to import it for certain operations. Um, it's, just, it's just basically a snapshot of the of the shape of the, of shape the, of the, the API name. on the server. Uh, Can you explain that TypeScript a syntax with a GQL and a backticks? Oh, so that's not TypeScript syntax. Okay. That's just a standard template, uh, template string? Template string. Template so it looks like a string literal, but the GQL in front of so it. So the GQL, yeah, so it's... And how does that work? Um, gosh, it's been a while since I've looked into it, but basically you, you can make a function that works with the string literals and it processes that. Cool. Um, Basically, within those two backticks, you can put dollar sign curly quotes and you can embed a uh, variable name from outside the scope of the string literal to the string literal. And then the, the GQL part, you can, is like how you help process So, yeah, that's, that's just a function or cool. It's just, just called a function that's provided by Apollo that is a template string function. So it can process that. That's uh, awesome. Let's see if it tag function. Sweet. So cool. that's yeah, that's a standard JavaScript thing. Cool, cool. Nowadays, um, yeah, a lot of times you just use the just use those the types of strings stuff, yeah. for multi-line <laughs> and stuff. Yeah, they, they can do more. They're they've uh, they have some power to them. And, and when you do one, be careful. Do not use the indentation that you normally use because the indentation will show will up. Will stay in your string. Yep. Uh, okay, so do that run generate. There we go. Okay, so the we now we install things. The generation completed. So here's the introspection file. So it literally just ran uh, a query against the API, and it just got all the type information. And I can go show you what that no oh, it doesn't like that here Schema and types. Like that. Um, so if you look down here, like you can you can query the schema and get all the types. So it just builds a, a more you know a bigger query than this with all these type fields, and then just 
hex, it just dumps that JSON that it spits back into, uh, into the introspection file. Um, so now the other thing we've generated is this GraphQL file. And this is gonna have uh, things like the query document. So it took that GraphQL file and turned it into an actual TypeScript file with that same template string uh, and gave it a, an export for that. It's gonna give us a few other things that I'll just show you the use of. So now we can get rid of, it's gonna lock up again, I think. Yep. That's right. Yep. So now we can, we can get rid of this and instead Switch to my adapter and see if it's the HDMI dongle. really fast for the next uh, black guy here. Uh, okay, so we deleted that constant. Uh, we can delete that import, so we no longer use it. And instead we can directly use that all members document. This doesn't give us any typings yet because it's just using a constant that's generated from the GraphQL file, uh, but it'll work the same way and return results. But it still doesn't give you typings. So we can import the all members query. And now we've got typings. Now, if you look at data, it's all members query or undefined. So down here could be undefined. So now we just realize we have a bug in our code that we didn't know about. TypeScript's telling us that could be undefined. You could have a, you could have an error, a runtime error at some point uh, if you don't get results back. So we can, it's actually not data, members and data. There we go. So now we map those and now members has a type and that's based directly off what's in that query. That's not just based off the schema type that are on the members type, that's that query. So even though we have uh, email address as a field in our schema, because we didn't query that, we just queried ID and we just queried name. That's all that exists on this member in the data because it's strongly typed to that specific query. Mm -hmm. So now we get code completion, we get the, the null uh, undefined warnings, everything there. Uh, so if we go back now, to our query, and now we want the email address. We put it there, but it doesn't exist yet. Uh, oh. It's not there until we run our generate. And now, email address. And you can see as the question mark, the email address in our schema is not required. So it, it knows that that's an optional field and it will tell you that in your typings. So all the way through, 
like your your queries is is brought in for you. It's uh, it's typed every level, uh, every field, uh, all right there for you. So just just that is a massive improvement. Um, but there's also another helper that it does. So instead of having to import the type and then pass it a document, you can instead So it'll generate a, a hook for you on every every single query that you have, uh, and that hook, instead of passing a document, will just take the exact same options as it'll just pass through all your options as you would have passed the use query. Uh, it'll pass through, so you can do your polling or your fetch policy or your caching, whatever. Uh, you just don't have to pass a document. You don't have to pass a type. It's just there. It's a good, you know, useful name that makes it easy to read and uh, less cluttered. Any questions to, to this point? So the, to add all this, the only policy really added was the, the all members um, so, QL. So yes, you, you do not have to add this <laughs> file, but I, I like to. Um, I like That's convention you like. I like it all to be in GraphQL files <laughs> and it just makes it cleaner to me. You can keep it in your code files, but then you kind of get like duplicate stuff. Um, so you don't have to add that. All you have to do to make this work is you add your codegen.yaml file. I can just describe what's on my screen. Use those assistive technologies. So you add, you the have the code code YAML. YAML. That comes from the CLI, correct? Uh, it'll generate it for you. Yeah. You can just make your own if you have like one another project, you just copy it over. Um, and then you you just run generate and based on what files you specify in the code gen, mm -hmm. like there's this generates key and then each line of that is a file that you will generate. So for like this one, uh, it chose TSX, although I don't know if it's actually uh, It can generate uh, components for you, but I don't think it actually is. That's another plugin. But it can generate uh, GraphQL uh, or query components, so you can you know just put it in your JSX instead of a use query hook. Um, but I don't ever use those. Uh, that's a that's a plugin you can use or options on the plugins. I'm not sure. Uh, but each one of these files, like we're not actually using this for anything right now, so you can just get rid of that. Uh, delete that file and now when you run generate it's not going to make that file it's going to make the one file so yeah, you've got the code gen yaml file you've got the file that it generates and that's all you've all you've changed in your project yep well am i getting this right that the two main benefits are one uh, getting some safety of coding time you mm -hmm. making sure that you miss and two it's an error-free way of redefining or of uh, passing redefined schemas into the code. Yeah, you can guarantee, like, essentially yeah. guarantee yourself that you don't have any breaking changes. That's right. One way or another. Yeah. So it's the two big benefits we're seeing. Yes. Right? Yep. Yeah. Type safety all the way with code completion and all stuff at every level. And uh, if we have time here in just a minute, I'll, I'll show if I can get the the. Uh, in, Co completion setup for the GraphQL file. It's not really part of this code gen stuff, uh, but yeah, you, every there's not a there's not a piece of access done on the GraphQL your API layer that's not type safe. And then as you make changes on the server and you rerun this, you can see this field was removed. It'll it'll give you an error and tell you and you you know to go deal with it versus uh, having no idea and. It, you know, happen to have tests or, or spot it some other way. Um, you can't have a, a fill in a query that uses the wrong casing and, you know, lowercase a on the email address and it's returning null for every, or probably pairing when it runs against the server. But still, like, you, you know those things at, at build time uh, or, you know, when you're developing, when you, when you run generate, you know any mistake you've made and then you get all the the nice IDE features the whole way uh, with code completion and all that. Uh, 
uh, on your team, do you like do you ignore the generated files and do those all in CI? No, so uh, or do you check those in from your machine? We, yeah, well, I'm actually putting this uh, into our code. Mm -hmm. I, I did all this stuff when I was before I got we got acquired by Automatic. Um, I'm putting all this stuff in right now, so we don't actually have a process around here or anything. But but that's the process. Is you when you want to go make a change around your queries or whatever, you go change to your query, you run generate, and it updates. But, and you keep but those you generated could, checked could, in to get, or yes. you? You okay. could call generate as part of the CI and enforce some safety that way. You could, so I think it's a good idea to uh, to have automated checks against, but I wouldn't like change, have, you know, CI change any of this stuff in the code. I would, like, there's no need to uh, regenerate any of these files when your server changes like it doesn't matter that the graphql server added a field it's not going to break anything in your clients um, and when you go if you want to make use of that field and you go and you add to a query you regenerate it'll, it'll pick that up from the schema but if, if the server adds a field it doesn't matter oh, now, if your server does breaking changes that's where like a, a ci job or something that checks that you know it can run against that schema would be great but i wouldn't make it like actually change anything So that's the client side code gen. It does the same thing for uh, mutations. I won't take time to show you that, I, but I will show you quickly uh, the server side. So there's more, more to it here. And let's just take these things here. So these will generate, uh, oh, actually that's a, I'll show you that one real quick first. This Apollo Helpers is a client side thing as well. So we'll run generate with this Apollo's, Apollo Helpers. So what this does, if you've ever uh, configured the cache is there is this type policies which is this big object that you go in you pass uh, let's say member all these options to you know, it knows that merge is valid there uh, because of, of the way its types are defined but it, it doesn't know what types are, are in your schema. So it's just gonna let you put in anything you want, I think. There we go. And it's just gonna, it's gonna take that. Uh, I could have member, and I could have it typoed, you know, whatever. And it's gonna take it, because it, it doesn't know what your types are. But if we pull this up, and use that, generated file now it should give me a second now it gives me the type should air there we go I don't know why it's not there, but uh, I think you can probably turn TypeScript typing uh, to stricter, or maybe it's that. There we go. So you use, it has two different types. Um, the strict one doesn't let you put any uh, that don't exist, and so it will catch your your typos. It will tell you if a type's been removed uh, when you regenerate all that type of thing. And this is just, if you've ever tried to configure all this stuff with your cache when you don't have types, uh, type script uh, types generated, it's just really annoying. Like,
you have to go copy from your schema, make sure you got the right, you know, names, make sure you got them, you know, capitalized right, make sure you got all the all the correct things versus just auto completion right there. You know you got it right, you know it's there. Uh, so that's it for that side of things. Now we can do the back end. Install TypeScript resolvers, plug in, and run to generate. Now we have a new file, resolver types. And this will generate, uh, for, for anyone not familiar with GraphQL, you can have a resolver, a custom resolver that runs on, on any field. So here we have resolvers right now, no typings. So again, you can put whatever you want. It's just gonna take it, doesn't care. But now with TypeScript code gen, there is a resolvers type. And now it knows what types you have. If you have a member, it knows what fields exist. about this div. I'm not sure why. I don't know. It's got some, some sort of syntax here. I'm not sure why. Did you forget Roger? No, this, I didn't change anything. There's some red down below. Ah, there we go. We lost it. <laughs> Fun little game we're playing here. It just wants me to see the time every few minutes. Okay, there we go. So. We see George, 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 because we had the resolver, but it's just, again, this is another one of those things that when you go to define these uh, resolvers in your code base, like if you have a hundred types and thousands of fields, like it just gets super clunky and making sure you have everything right is, is a pain. Um, and so you can also like split this out into files. Let's say you, you wanted to separate these out and you can have a, uh, another file that has something like member resolvers. And I can't remember, yeah. And just use that directly. And then you can build that up using those individual types. So if you can split it out, get, uh, have a file for each type or however you wanna organize it, use those subtypes directly and then bring it together in your main resolver level and just have the whole layer all the way through with every file completely type safe um, and let you know of any errors, any issues right up front. And it's a joy to work with this compared to the hassle of trying to make sure you have everything right. 
-hmm. on your own. So that memory resolvers is auto-generated also? Yeah, so we can go look oh. at it. Uh, like this resolvers here, all it all it does is oh, have these top level things and then uses another type that it generates. So that you can use you can use the top level resolvers and put it all in one place, which works for a demo. Or if you have a you know bigger code base, you're not gonna put it all in one gigantic file. So you can use those types directly and uh, keep it cleaner however you want, however you choose to organize. Um, yeah. Any other questions? James is more of an Apollo question than a sure. than Any, yeah, question. Yeah. Can you does Apollo play the same when you're using like static site? That if you're doing get static props or get server side props on the page level? Do so you have to do anything different there uh, than either? So Apollo is really I mean it's just a client. Um, so your in memory cache and stuff becomes less useful. I don't even know if you have to yeah. probably do have to have a cache. Um, but like you know, if you're just running a like server side thing or something, it's not going to do you any yeah. any good. Although if you're doing, I guess uh, if you're doing the generation, you can yeah. pass that cache to the client and have it like pre preload that cache, which okay. I've done that before. Um, but otherwise, it, you can just instantiate a client, run the run the queries you want to run, and then if you want to uh, extract that cache and pass it to the client, uh, so it's all preloaded, you can do that. Um, but yeah, it's the same either way. Is this a tool you built or is this a tool you I wish. Oh. I'd love to have built it. No, it's just a tool I really love. Like um, when I you know, I did I did GraphQL kinda the old fashioned way, if you can call it that, when it's uh, not that old. Um, but just kind of plain JavaScript, you know, client and all that stuff. And especially when you start you know, doing stuff with the cache and like local cache stuff and all this stuff, it just, you know, like anything, it gets complex. You got a lot of moving pieces, you've got ton of fields and you might forget the names and all these things and it's just so easy to to mess it up and you have to just constantly check documentation or, or run the query five times until you get the right field name or whatever it is and uh, when I discovered this a few years ago it's gotten better and better and better all the time but it just makes it such a joy to work in that I just, I just love it so I, I brought it with me to automatic and we're, we're uh, gonna put that into all of our GraphQL usage there um, and really I don't want to do any GraphQL uh, work without it because it's just it's so nice. Um, yeah, to me as someone who's more on the fence about using TypeScript or not this kind of is a good selling point for TypeScript itself because it kind of makes it one source of truth rather than having five different sources of truth. Right. Yep. Yep. You get it. Do it's, you know there's any similar tooling for other type languages that might be using GraphQL? I, I don't know of those specific projects, I would imagine there's some stuff. Um, let me see here, this other demo thing that I worked on. Uh, I think there's a, I was thinking I had a file in this, but I don't. There's so, I was gonna show you, there's a way to uh, configure your GraphQL endpoint for your IDE to know how to pull uh, your schema or, or to look at your, your introspection file, I think. And then in your GraphQL files, you'll get, uh, you know, you just get code completion right here yeah. and writing your query becomes okay, even that's... easier. Um, you don't have any, uh, you have to look at the documentation or go go to another tool. It's really easy to go over here to your playground and you know write your, write your queries here, then copy them over, uh, that type of thing. Uh, these days, the tools are so nice, uh, but you can get kind of that same experience right in your IDE uh, if you if you configure it. But I didn't set that up for for this, so I'll take time to figure that out. What hosts this playground? So this playground is. Part of the Apollo server, so okay, there's cool, a cool. in here where I set up the server. There's this Apollo server plugin landing page, GraphQL playground. So uh, cool. fortunately, 
auto completion for that because I never remember that. <laughs> but it's very clear what it is. It's very clear what it is. You can't, you can't mistake it. Better long question. name. Um, but yeah, you you know, in a production environment, you can you know turn that off. You know, have a check for your your environment or whatever. But it's awesome. But yeah, you just throw that plugin in there and boom, like you can hit that and play around with your your GraphQL endpoint. Uh, pretty slick. Anything else? I'm happy to answer any any GraphQL, TypeScript, Trojan, anything related to any of this. If not, then eat some more sandwiches. Are you gonna have links and information? Yeah, if it recorded, we'll post a, a recording and then I'll put some, some links to all these things uh, when we post that. All right, well, thanks for coming. Thank you. Thank you. I'll, I'll, uh, Pay out all of the little uh, <laughs> cutouts, every every uh, freeze. There'll be a twenty minute shorter yeah. presentation yeah. video. Just <laughs> yeah, that's right. I'll just and I'll just go. I'll stay <laughs> after and just do this again without anybody here. So it's for the uh, patient side. So we engage with patients, but we're selling to pharmacies and pharma. Uh, and they're the ones that interact with the patient. The patient uses the device, and then they get access to the patient's own. Okay. Very cool. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
I'm always interested in more stuff. I actually work more in all sports. I also work a little bit for server, but I'm just kidding. I'm just a yeah, I actually have a little bit for a job, so... Love some Kansas City? Yeah, I know. Yeah. Yeah. Never done graphics really well. Yeah, one of our, actually, one of our sister companies is their healthcare staff, so doctors, nurses, virtual staff. And they did a lot with us, um, like uh, the pandemic. Sure. Place, you know, con contract nurses and doctors in New York. But they do, they do a lot of great stuff. They do a lot of we're more familiar really with well they built the evolution tracking system for the or even for the nurses, there's a mobile app that they built where the nurses can go in and say, I want this geography or this hospital or these hours. Do you know they handle things like, like background checks and all that kind of stuff? So so that functionality is in there. I'm not as in tune with that. I just know that's a difficult and large project. Yeah. Now one of the one of the cool things is I mentioned credentialing. Um, so nurses can go on a mobile app and they can you know, take photos of their certifications and that saves to their file. Um, it's not just about scheduling. Like, so they can keep an eye on top of things. Yeah. That seems like it would normally be a very situation, so being able to I saw the same real problem. Um, <laughs> the first time, no, no, Moonshot built that software. Well, actually, Moonshot started as the IT department for Favorite about 30 years ago. And so it um, grew to a point where, okay, we're doing the ad, we're doing the administration, the architecture, the security, the support, and all this stuff. And we were already doing some work for outside platforms as well about four years ago. I took so long. Finally, four years ago, they said, you know what? You guys need to be your own company. And so at that point, we were in the building, not that one that you see, but the one on the other side. And they brought us across the street to this building. Um, and that was four years ago when we that story. 